Managing Director of Paragon Trust Company and tax and private client practitioner, joins us to bring a common sense approach to money in a world of total insanity. Let's welcome Tony D'Angelo. All right, every Tuesday we uh, bring on the one and only Tony D to uh, dig through some of the dirt that's happening here in the state of Connecticut. Tony, first, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Lee LC. I'm proud to be among everybody. So uh, we have obviously been talking at length about Russia and Ukraine. I figure we can start out with uh, you giving us your perspective. Yeah, and I have sort of a uh, maybe a more local bent, but it's just that it's local going to global and, and listening to all the fine commentators who know infinitely more than I ever will about it. But uh, I like to look for curiosities, as you know, and we've got uh, Comrade Dick Blumenthal shows up at St. Michael's Ukrainian Church in New Haven on Sunday with uh, some other uh, known oppressors like our governor to decry Russia's move on the Ukraine. And I get lost with the phoniness of all this stuff. Now, this man is a clear communist sympathizer, and here he is getting cheers by a state-run media and everybody else for advocating against a predominantly communist-driven interest. He's joined again by these other people who are like him. Uh, and and, and I'm, I'm standing in the shower last night, you know, it was a late night, and I'm saying to myself, it seems like there's only one thing dumber than your average Connecticut p- political figure is your average Connecticut voter. I don't I don't know uh, how the ignominy of this is not obvious and carried to the rooftops. You know, where our, our oppressors cry from freedom. I, I That's my thought about all of it, and that, that's just really my first thought. No, listen, I've been saying that forever. I don't, you know, try to take credit for it, but the people that should, you know, be pointing the fingers, they should put the fingers at themselves. The folks that are voting are the ones who put these people back in office over and over again. I, I, I know I'm not really talking to the people listening to me right now because... The folks yeah, we, who are, we preach to the choir. Yeah. This is why people, you know, hate politicians so much because they, they they have no regard for the public interest to everybody's detriment. Now, relative to this, um, had to kind of dust off my uh, whatever you want to call it, my, uh, my my Russia cap and my uh, <laughs> my 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 spiritual cap, uh, which is very very dusty. Um, the thing to keep in mind with all of this, which I have to keep reminding myself that. Putin's desire, really, Russia's desire is to make a move on Israel. And people look at me and they say, you're crazy. I said, no, you got to read your Bible. You got to read the book of Revelation because they want the land of milk, milk and honey. They want the food. They want the lushness. They want the natural resources. Now, it's curious to me that uh, our illustrious governor was in Israel. We'll get to that at the end. I mean, I, uh, you know, I, I mean, uh, I, not not to be conspiratorial about it, but you keep getting these pronouncements from the state saying, oh, we've been interested in Israel for some time. Well, gee, that's kind of interesting. Why Israel and, you know, why not uh, some other country? But uh, I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll ask the kids there to give that a look. And, you know, if they have any thoughts on that, please share them. But as we get away from that and as we get to things that are more local to the, you know, the scandals and the governor and things like that, um, on February 27th, you know, again, it's one of these things where, I, uh, you know, I'm glad I have a chair with arms because I'd be falling off of it. Um, we had a number of, uh, and again, I am not political. I am not Republican nor Democratic. I am concerned about the welfare of the state. I'm concerned about the welfare of particularly children whom we keep throwing in the road and running over in the state, you know, regardless of what people will say or do or think. Um, on February 27th, there was a, uh, a press conference of Republican legislators saying that we need to have our own investigation uh, into uh, the horrors of what Ned has done, you know, mostly centering around the things that the feds are already doing. And I'm scratching my head, uh, you know, my, my sore head and saying, is this part of a massive CYA exercise of what you should have been doing for 18 months when all this was happening? You know, and then um, – it was admitted uh, by the people that were there that, yes, we're doing this for political reasons, um, you know, and, and it's a gigantic woof ticket, Lee Elsie, because it's the kind of thing that, you know, the perpetrators are not going to cooperate. And then it's like, well, let's do an investigation. Let's spend $5 million. We'll get to that in a little bit. But, um, you know, it's, well... Okay, who does the investigation? Who are they loyal to? We are back to the Vietnam peace talks. We are back to the Paris Peace Accord, where they started in 1966, and they argued for two years over 
the size and the shape and the dimensions of the table. I mean, this is absolutely unbelievable. But I thought about that, and I kind of ruminated on it and, you know, kind of bit my lower lip and chewed. Um, leaving the side, uh, the, my first question is, why do you need to go over what the feds are going to go through with a fine-tooth comb? Do what other people have done in other states. If there's a problem, pledge cooperation. You know, let them do what they need to do, because, right. frankly, who's kidding who? It needs to be done. Uh, and, and the other thing is, if you want to be useful, if you want to do something that's, you know, meaningful, that maybe the feds are doing, maybe the feds aren't doing, um, all of which we've covered on this show, um, there are – I've been doing this over the course of the weekend – there are a number of questions that can be answered that can be asked. I got up to seventeen, and these are the questions that basically are uh you know not the ones like okay, how much money uh how much of Ned's investments are in the Yukon endowment? Well, Ned can say none, and Yukon won't say a word, not those kind of questions, but the questions where we know Ned has done something and there's been absolutely no follow up whatsoever. I don't know if we'll have time to go through all seventeen, but I'll hit, kind of hit some highlights um I would like to know, when was the decision to form uh, Oak 3 made? That was formed in August of 19. That is a Cayman Islands um, limited partnership. Now, and this is a question of, you know, what did you know and when did you know it? Because if you knew you were going to form a Cayman Islands limited partnership in May of 19, uh, I'm sorry, May of 2019, when uh, you did the ethics plan, um, you should have disclosed that and put that on the table. Now, highly, highly unlikely, as we have discussed, if this just came about, you know, and, and just was formed uh, right after the ethics plan, an honorable, decent person would have come and said, you know, we have an amendment. Something else has happened. Let us put this into the ethics plan. We want to be transparent. You know, who's kidding who here? Um, in that same ethics plan, no one mentions it. We do on this show. Why have you never appointed an independent intermediary, an overseer, somebody who actually looks to see, you know, who's there and what's there? Um, never any mention of that whatsoever. Then again, you might get into a Paris Peace Talks kind of thing there, but they've never even mentioned it. Um, back to the data. Who are the actual license holders of uh, Centrellus and Mount Sinai Genomics? That's the information base of Semaphore. You know, is this the kind of thing where if Semaphore just goes, you know, kerflui and Ned goes kerflui, he's sitting on the island of Patmos somewhere. Nobody knows where he is, but he's still collecting all these royalties from personal data. Um, what I would like to know, what I would like to see asked, where are the actual promissory notes to the Semaphore debt? You know, they owe the state millions of dollars. Anybody ever look at the promissory notes? Is any of this secured? Um, and I'd like to know about where state identities have been handed off. Now, the other thing is Unite CT. This is the, you know, the rental organization which you know, saves people from homelessness, which uses his software. Um, what does the Connecticut Hospital Association, it's hidden in the Connecticut Hospital Association, uh, what do they pay uh, for this? Because it all runs through state money. You can't really get at the figure because they hide it in a nonprofit. Uh, and what do they pay for the contract? And why did you put this in a nonprofit, Mr. Lamont? Why isn't this out in public view? Again, these are simple questions. You know, these aren't things that he can answer with a negative. Um, and then the other one, I know we're going to run out of time. I've got a whole bunch of them. Believe no, keep me. going. Keep going. You're uh, good. But, uh, you know, I want Jack Rubenstein. What about the $15 million and they won't give you purchase records? Where did that all go? You know, we need a better answer there than humana, humana, humana. Uh, Advanced CT, you know, the state recently gave a million dollars to Advanced CT, another nonprofit. You know, who are the contributors to this thing? It's like every time you pick up your, your local newspaper and you read, oh, bad Eversource, hand slap, they've got to pay a fine. Does that go into Advanced CT? 
does that somehow get laundered out into political contributions where Eversource turns around and raises the rates in effect, our raised rates then become de facto political contributions, you know, and then um, in the interest of time, I'll just give you one more, Mr. Transparency, Mr. You know, uh, you tell me, you give me a call. Well, here's my call to you, Mr. Lamont. Um, why have you not disclosed that $90 million of your Oak Cayman three interests uh, are in the state pension fund. You don't say a word about that. And again, these are like, you know, these are questions he can't say no to. And the $5 million figure that was referenced by those people at the press conference, um, here's my proposal. Give my food bank in Putnam, Connecticut, 1% of that. I don't want to die. You know, believe me, I, I, I can get by without that. But I will get you in a room for one day. I will go over these things, plus 15 other things that really are a little bit more complicated. And you could do something meaningful rather than selling wolf tickets again. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, these are the things that drive people nuts about politics and politicians. Um, the, uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's my soapbox. I mean, we, we want to look for the answers. The answers are as plain as the nose on her face. Uh, the construction scandals will take care of themselves. Federal matters always do. Take it from one who has been there. Hmm. Well, I got n- no, sadly, I have nothing to add because that was so well, you know, p- put out there. And you've done this for a, over a year now. Uh, going over some of this stuff uh, against the uh, the governor, you're ahead of the curve. So uh, you're right on the money with all that. And, you know, maybe maybe down the road, uh, Tony, put those down so we can all look at them one after another, all 17. That's that a neat in the list, but uh, believe me, if you want, anybody wants my scribble notes, let me know. I'll <laughs> gladly give you the notes if you want to see how yeah. sausage is made. Um, I got a pile of it on this table. <laughs> yeah, well, it, 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 you've been so far ahead of the curve on all of these. It's, it's, I don't even know what to say. I'm at a loss for words, but I thank you again for going through some of that uh, here today. Tell, no, tell the us. The answers are. Uh, the questions are obvious. Start asking those. If the feds are dealing with the building scandal, you can get to the other stuff. And I don't understand. You know, I'm not concerned about political motives. I am concerned about the truth getting out. I've seen too many innocent people hurt, and that's what's troubled me. Well, this administration, as you have pointed out again for the longest time, has been sketchy at best. It has been certainly not transparent. And, you know, I think a lot of the things that they're doing right now here in the 11th hour under these investigations is to cover their own rear end. Uh, That's what it feels like to me. You had mentioned in the beginning of this, you know, why not a bipartisan look at some of this stuff? Because they don't want that. You know, I think that they're afraid for what they're going to find in the end from some of that stuff. Well, yeah, and it, it's it's the kind of thing of, you know, are we all going to get together and, you know, let, let's all develop a good story as to what took place. I, you know, it, at this point it's like I don't know, but it's like, you know, it, you beat your head against the wall thinking how bad of a train wreck do we have? I mean, it's like, yeah. you know, you, you, your brain will only take you so far. And I'm sure things will come out from time to time saying, oh, yeah, that really, you know, that was, oh, is that what happened? Oh, right. okay. Yeah, it, it's absolutely amazing. But you're, you don't have, I mean, you don't, uh, you, know, you don't have an axe to grind with Lamont, you know, going in, Tony. You're not that kind of guy. You just, you just assimilated and accumulated all this information and you just spread it out for folks to sort of absorb. It's a lot in three years. He has done a lot of stuff that makes you scratch your head in three years, stuff that... Well, and he goes on. You know, interesting, I had two conversations with him uh, as he was campaigning, and I thought, gee, what a perfectly nice man. Right. And we had two very cordial conversations. Um, I, I didn't spend my life thinking about ways of hating Ned Lamont. Right, exactly. I, I, I never do. That's the point. <laughs> That's with actually anybody. the point I was trying to make. Like, you're not, you know, you didn't hate Lamont going in. Like, no. it just it, it just happens to, you know, you happen to be... Uh, I, I thought he was a polite and engaging yeah. man when I first met him. All right, listen, before we do run out of time, he went on a little trip to Israel. Let's talk a little Israel. Mm-hmm. I made a um, I made a, an FOI request. It's interesting. You know, Connecticut has strictly pushed me, pull you. Um, I guess it was on February 22nd, which I think the last time we spoke. And I said, uh, give me everything that Ned did. 
uh, on his winter vacation. Uh, I didn't know <laughs> the exact words I used. And Walter Menvar, his, his counsel, sent me a very nice printed itinerary, yeah. which I think was constructed, or so it seemed. It was a few days later, and it's now part of a public press release. And uh, I'm just going to go down a couple of these things. We'll have more time to do it. Again, you know, we've got Ned in Israel thinking the beginning of the conversation, you know, biblical prophecy. I'm going to leave that to the people that are brighter than I, but it does kind of pose a question in my mind. And, you know, it's a talk about uh, what they're saying is technology. On February 20th, he meets with Vintage Investment Partners and Viola and the Digital Currency Group. All of these uh, interests have ties to his wife's equities. You can look that up. Hmm. I could provide the details on that. On February 22nd, on Tuesday, he meets with something called r Crowd, which was one of the funders of Cryon, which was another wife's en- equity, and it's tied to Hamilton Lane, which is the broker of his wife's interest. Now, it's like, then you ask the obvious questions, which I've got three in my mind. What is UConn doing there? I mean, UConn could find more ways to waste money for crying out loud, except for DECD, who was also there. And the other thing is, why is there no member of the state? run media on this trip you know it's like we're taking this you know mr menvar sent me this uh which is now public and it's like you know i mean for all we know we, you know what he may have been legitimizing this is a good business development and i really wish people would stop legitimizing this is a good business development and i really wish people would stop with legitimizing this is a good business development trip. When has this man had a good motive on anything without something? It's like doing this with all this stuff happening, he's really throwing it in our faces. And, you know, I keep saying this. I keep getting more and more irritated. I'm, I'm looking at I have the same itinerary in front of me. And it's a hell of a yeah. trip, I tell you. You know, he had some fun on uh, Taxpayer Dime, I think. You know, going bouncing around and... Uh, and, taking- and at least he should be called to account for his personal business on that trip yeah. with anything that, you know, he uh, had a tie to uh, that had something to do with his wife's interests. It's like, how does that benefit me? You're taking my tax dollars and you're, you know, you're furthering your kingdom. Tony D'Angelo joins us every Tuesday. You can always uh, email me or, Tony, you can uh, throw out your Twitter so folks can follow. you got a huge following, building following. Where do they go? Uh, at Tony D'Angelo 7 on Twitter, and, uh, you know, uh, I, I love to pick up the conversation. Before I let you go, uh, baseball sort of, did they have a breakthrough yesterday or no? Oh, I uh, believe me, it's like at this point I've, I've lost uh, interest. I, uh, it's like anything else. It's like there's, uh, they'll get to a point where they'll, just, they'll decide to do something until I, uh, um, I, I'm just very angry with baseball at this yeah. point. You know, maybe someday my heart will warm, but uh, they've really disappointed me. All right, buddy. Another great job. Thank you, pal. I'll talk to you soon.